Kankakee County judge has just ruled the Safety Act is unconstitutional. Isn't puberty confusing enough? Children are being influenced to think that there's something wrong with them and change their bodies. I genuinely look at that as evil. Oh, you're supposed to be this way. You're supposed to be this way. Wake the fuck up. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, queers and everything in between, my name is Amari and... I'm Kaizen. Uh, today we have a, a topic that has been hotly debated over the course of the internet in the last couple days. Yep. It is AB1955, known as the Safety Act. If you didn't know, AB1955 strengthens existing California law prohibiting school districts from enacting any policy requiring staff to disclose information about a student's sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression to anyone without the student's consent. So what does that mean in layman's terms? That means if you have a child in California and that child uh, tells their teacher or comes out as wanting a gender transition, the teacher nor the school system is responsible for letting you, the parent, know. And it's, uh, I think, an issue that can only really exist in 2024. So here we are. <laughs> this man is shaking his head. <laughs> this man. <laughs> so let's talk about it because, you know, we want to be open-minded. Let's consider all opinions here sure. on the culture. You know what? Let's do this. First, let me give you the best version of the argument that I disagree with. The reason you would sign this bill mm -hmm. is if you think that a child wanting to change their gender is something that should be encouraged and it's something that's healthy. And you want to make sure that even if the parents have will have concern or it will disagree, you want to create as safe an environment as possible for a natural, healthy transition to happen. And you are trying to protect children from uh, parents who you view as abusive mm -hmm. and you view as bigoted mm -hmm. because you view this as something where it's totally healthy, it's totally natural, mm -hmm. and the child should be able to, to go through that process and they should be totally free. It's funny you say that because Tony Huang, executive director of Equality California says, forced outing policies remove opportunities for LGBTQ plus students to build trust and seek out resources that best fit their coming out experience. Okay, great, great. That's a really good argument. Yeah. However, oh shit. <laughs> however, <laughs> you don't create a safe environment by removing parents from the environment. Parents are the first and last line of defense mm -hmm. when it comes to a child's health. Mm -hmm. If a child is going through gender questioning or want to change their identity, mm -hmm. look, maybe I'll allow for the possibility that that's a natural desire mm -hmm. in, in some subset of the population. Mm -hmm. In a lot of the population, it's just gender dysphoria and it's a psychological illness. Mm -hmm. This is not like a kid thinking that he's attracted to men or a girl thinks she's, in, she's attracted to women. That's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. That was possible always. Mm -hmm. This ability to change your genitals to look like a man's or a woman's, that's brand new. That's a human thing. That's not a natural thing. Mm -hmm. So before we just decide, well, we have a technology, so just fucking waving the scalpels, <laughs> doing whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Like, let's like understand what's going on here. And it turns out that a lot of gender dysphoria is just people being depressed and anxious and insecure and thinking something's wrong with them mm -hmm. and trying to find anything that they can do to feel like they can love themselves. Going through a prepubescent confusing time around their identity. And isn't puberty confusing enough mm -hmm. without letting children make life altering decisions mm -hmm. when they're in puberty and they're confused? Wake the fuck up. Like, seriously, what are we doing? <laughs> These are kids. Kids don't get maximum fr uh, freedom mm -hmm. because they don't have the ability to be responsible fully yet. Mm -hmm. So if you want to protect kids who want to come out as changing their gender identity, mm -hmm. great, that's awesome. But you recruit the parents into the process. You don't remove them. Mm -hmm. You educate the parents on like how to handle the child who might be gender questioning. And, and what do you think is going to happen mm -hmm. when the parents find out that the school has been hiding this from them and the child? You think that's going to be a safe environment for the kids? It's like... Not only is this policy just too fucking permissive mm -hmm. of a trend that we should not be allowing. Sorry, mm -hmm. we should not be encouraging kids mm -hmm. to believe that there's something wrong with the body that they were born in. Mm -hmm. That's not self-love. Mm -hmm. But to go as far to, to do that and erode the family unit in the process, this is insanity. It's insanity. So can I ask you a question? Do you think that children should ever be allowed to transition gender? Hmm. My issue isn't with children changing changing genders mm. my issue is with where it's coming from so let's just be honest when i was growing up i went to high school right how many people were talking about man i'm just in the wrong body <laughs> like like for real yeah like 
how many people were really saying like yo and yeah. you know sure devil's advocate maybe they were all just hiding it because it wasn't accepted yet and you know mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll consider all opinions and just statistically before like five years ago i wasn't hearing about this conversation at all right and so you could have the argument it's like oh it's just because everybody had to hide which mm -hmm. i don't really think that that's a very solid argument I'm just statistically there has to be some sort of correlate as to why it's so high now mm -hmm. and i think that the correlate is because you go from like supportive and enabling and allowing to encouraging and confusing people being like oh you're having a hard time have you considered if you're a man and putting that i Jesus. putting <laughs> putting that idea into the the mind of someone who's literally trying to like form who they are in general it's like I, I just feel like that is so wildly irresponsible mm -hmm. and it's like it's going to i think correlate to the disproportionate amount of the conversations that are being had now versus when i was in mm. high school mm -hmm. and guess what before the science was available i bet you no one was like i'm in the wrong body i should be a man if you just leave a child alone statistically the majority of the time all the confusion that they were dealing with and all the stress and anxiety actually just comes down to the the core element of they just had a different sexuality in the people around them. You talked about gender dysphoria being on the rise, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Mental health issues are also on the rise. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're correlated? Saying, but where do we think this came from? Y yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like maybe there's deeper mental health issues that we should be addressing mm -hmm. and putting ourselves in harmony with nature before we decide to change someone's body forever. Let's play this real quick, just to get real. Let me get some. Let me get some. Spice it up. Look, cayenne. Get some cayenne and this motherfucker. Black people don't kill themselves as much as white people. Mm. Black people don't have a, a, a trend in the culture of slitting their wrists. Mm. I went to high school with white people. That was pretty fucking common. Mm. It's a it's a disproportionately Caucasian thing. Why is that? Because in black culture, we're like, no, we don't do that. What the fuck you doing? Mm. Toughen up, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> For real, right? Yeah. With white people, that's not the case. If you continue to perpetuate a certain idea and make that idea okay, then people, especially people who are malleable, are going to latch onto the idea. Yep. If When we present certain ideas to a certain malleable population, they take those ideas on. Mm -hmm. Then I think we should start having conversations about like, okay, well, the things that we're giving to people are, have we really vouched and vetted to make sure that these things are healthy mm -hmm. long term? Or are these just kind of like temporary fix, just like cutting your wrist might be a, a, a temporary fix? Yeah. Great point. Thank you. Great point. This is the point of culture. Yeah. Culture provides structure for society. For the culture, for the culture, for the culture. Yeah, that's why we're doing this <laughs> for the culture because yeah. we do need structure mm -hmm. in society mm -hmm. for freedom to be expressed yeah. safely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And kids, again, are not responsible enough to fully express freedom. We're gonna about to get spiritual for a second. Oh, right? shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, oh, shit. Shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, When I see stuff like this mm -hmm. where children are being influenced to think that there's something wrong with them and change their bodies. Mm -hmm. I genuinely look at that as evil. Mm. It's hard to view that as, as supportive of life. We need to be able to look at something that's evil, which is just anti-life. It's not about even right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is not healthy. <laughs> we need to be able to say, this is not good. Children wanting to change their gender is not good. It's good that we are free enough that it's possible, I guess, but it is not good for a child to want to do that. For an adult would want to do that, great. At that point, you have enough responsibility. I feel like part of the reason we've gotten to this point is because we've eroded the family unit. And the family unit, just like culture, provides structure. So if you erode the family unit, then people are going to be more confused, more disconnected, more suicidal, more depressed, more anxious. And now we're just splitting families up more by saying if a child is going through a confusing gender questioning period, parents are going to be removed from the picture. Yeah, and, without and, and, and we're going to say we trust the government with this information over the parents? What? What? The value of this show is that we're willing to consider multiple perspectives, right? Yep. And so we consider the perspective of Tony Huang or whatever his name is. It's like, he's like, essentially he's saying, he's like, yo, if a child realizes that they are gender dysphoric and going, wanting to go through a transition and they're scared of telling their parents, we won't tell their parents because we want them to feel safe. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, I hear you. But for example, it's like, imagine you're black. Like for myself. What? <laughs> Damn, how did my Damn. dad? It's like something just got heavier in my pants. <laughs> Imagine you're black, right? And you grew up with all white people, right? And you see on TV that all black people, they walk like this. Talk like this, nigga. And you're like, well, I don't talk like that. <laughs> and I don't grab my crotch. 
I must be white. Mm -hmm. And then you had a, a race transition surgery. Kind of like Roach, Rachel Dozal did, and she became like the butt of the joke for like years. Like, like think about the most fundamental principles of identity, race, gender. And it's like, well, if if you're going to, if your assertion is that people should be able to express themselves and do whatever, whatever that should be across the board. That can't just be because it's trendy for the genders to be switched. It's like, cool. As a black man, if I decide I want to be more white, like, because I want better loans or whatever the fuck from the bank. It's like, cool. Should I be able to get like a racial transition surgery? Should I allow my kid who grew up around white people and he grew up to be black, like he should be able to transition? Or is it maybe because he's seeing media that's presented to him like, oh, you're supposed to be this way. You're supposed to be this way. Oh, God. Ooh, so, you, see, you see what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, you well, because you don't grab your crotch, you inside you must not actually be black let's get your transition but it's like okay well maybe it's actually more so about the presentation of certain identities that's confusing people mm -hmm. right if you're presenting that all men are super jacked and you know angry and emotionally volatile and you're not that that doesn't mean you're a woman it just, it just means you're not like that they not like us and that's okay you don't have to cut off your dick like we can have more nuanced opinions of what it means to be a man and a woman and just because you don't fall into one very specific gender role does not mean that there's some dissonance between the chromosomes and dna of your body and your mind mm -hmm. that's no that's not the case mm -hmm. it's called just have more nuance and accept yourself for not being a super hyper masculine yes. man or accept yourself for not being a super feminine woman yeah that's why i think great point the the non-binary tag yeah. is useful. Yeah. Like I can see how if you think that the term man comes with a bunch of pre-associations that you don't want, yeah. then and you want to say I'm neither man nor woman, yeah. then sure, that makes sense to me. Then going as far as changing your genitals yeah. is a much bigger decision mm -hmm. that a child should not be making. That's like me going on a date with a girl and I realize I don't want to pay for it. I'm like, I must be a woman. <laughs> In this moment, I'm a woman. <laughs> you can't make a permanent decision change when it's convenient. We need to be able to identify confusion for what it is, Yeah, which is a sign of something psychologically not being aligned, mm -hmm. not louding it and valorizing it as a healthy thing, mm -hmm. certainly not wanting to encourage kids to be confused, mm -hmm. and then create boundaries so that if a child wants to make that change, they can wait until they're an adult and they've mm -hmm. gone through a, a process of integration and yeah, psychological yeah. help and evaluation. Yeah. Grow up a little bit. Grow let, up. let your prefrontal cortex develop a little. Get laid a little bit. Realize, oh, I just like sucking dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can do it. Yeah, great. Fantastic. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in to For the Culture. Um, feel free to cancel Kaizen. Uh, his uh, Instagram is right here. Feel free to... Uh, Not that you're going to need it. Uh, my name is Mari. Feel free to give me a follow, a like, and a positive yeah. comment. <laughs> and for more hate speech, keep subscribing to For the Culture. <laughs> Your hate speech central, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Good night, y'all. Talk to you later.